daughter, scoot over so they can see you. This is my daughter, so you get up. No, you need to stay in the camera. It's your book signing with the wonderful author, Serena Whistler, which is also called Hamilton, right? And it is so exciting because I want to let you know, Serena was my student. And yeah. she was a student, oh my God, how many years ago? I graduated 2017 from your program. Yeah. And, but you were my student way before that, right? Yeah. So it's been, a, yeah, a long journey. At, and and um, she was getting your master's degree at Chapman. And I remember you told me your story of being a foster kid, which she wrote in this wonderful, beautiful foreword, right? That she wrote inside of this book. And then she did all of the art and illustrations. It is so pretty with my brother editing it and everything. And it's like absolutely amazing. And I told her as a surprise, I need you to draw my daughter. Cause I remember this picture and I, I was like, you have to draw her cause it will represent when she was in foster care herself. Right. Yeah. And look at the beautiful job that she did on my daughter. This book gives me goosebumps because you know, I, I wanted a matching set one from each child but also this, this tells the journey of someone who you know, um, didn't get to pick her family, right? Like you didn't get to pick yours, right? And then she right. came to my life. She told, she my daughter made me realize it's been almost 20 years, right? That she has been in my life. We've been together and we've been two little peas in a pod ever since, right? So I could not have birthed a daughter that is more my daughter than my daughter, right? <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and if anyone's ever seen us, you know this. And so... <laughs> And but I am just so proud of my daughter and she's at USC now and wants to get her doctorate of putting this together. She went through cooking school and she made all of these recipes. I've eaten them all. We've all eaten them all and in this book and making something nutritious for foster kids, right? And so one of the things I wanted to do besides sign a few of these books is also have each of you tell you tell your story about this journey so that people can really understand that this is not just a cookbook, right? This is really something more, you know? So Serena, do you wanna go first? Cause my daughter is always very shy. <laughs> um, so like introduction, talk about the- Just talk about the process, who you are just a little bit. Okay. Um, well, just a little bit is uh, my name's Serena, and I am um, a clinician, a therapist, a crisis worker, a former foster youth. Uh, I was in the LA County foster care system from age 12 until I aged out at 18. Uh, it was not a fun time in my life. Um, I have been working in this field as a, as a clinician or as a mentor or as a therapist or whatnot for the last decade and trying to advocate for other foster youth who never were adopted, never kind of found their footing. Um, so when I did my master's degree and I met Miss uh, Dr. Debra, uh, we hit it off and I told her my story and, and then this project came up. We've done a, f a, a few other projects too, because she helped me out at another place that I worked at. Um, but uh, when she told me about this project, I was really excited because this is a huge issue in the foster care community that we don't really talk about. We talk about our, our complex trauma. We talk about grief and loss. We talk about um, attachment. We talk about sexual abuse and physical abuse and all those things. But we don't talk about um, the, the food anxiety that happens. And it, it's a, it's a kind of a little niche issue, but you know, me and Sonia can both attest to, um, how much it can affect us. I mean, I've, I've struggled with, uh, binge eating my whole life. And a lot of it has to do with, I went hungry as a kid a lot. And especially when you're living with strangers, uh, that can be really scary for a child. You don't know when you're going to eat. You don't know if they're going to feed you. You don't know if it's gonna be food that's familiar or comfortable for you. And so um, when I wrote the foreword, it's a little personal, uh, but I really wanted to kind of drive the point home uh, because besides the other things I went through, this has been a struggle all the way into my adult life, trying to learn how to eat healthy, learning about nutrition, learning how to take care of my body. Cause you don't, foster parents don't teach you that stuff. A lot of them just don't. 
uh, you know, Deborah's Deborah's an exception. I had a lot of bad parents, and uh, I just hope that this book reaches the right kids and uh, helps them to learn some things that we should have been taught, you know, when we were in those foster homes. So I'm really grateful to you, Sonia, for writing it, and I'm really grateful you guys let me do the illustrations because that's my other passion in life is art. And uh, yeah, I just love you guys for doing this. Yeah, it's like right behind you, the sketches that we started with. Yeah, I put I put the original artwork up in case anybody was interested. That's how it looked before it was in the book. <laughs> Is it absolutely beautiful? Like when you sent the first sketches, we were like, oh my God, that's it. Because usually my brother does all the art and then she's like, yeah. I can really do this. I can really help you. And I'm just like, okay, you know what? <laughs> foster you the art like it's all my brother my son is putting the book in there it's it's like all coming together right and you know since since day one it's like kismet of how you know she's like I, i'm gonna do this cookbook and i'm like okay we're gonna do this book, cookbook and you know me i finish a project but it's like it, it all went together but sonia mm -hmm. let you introduce yourself and talk about it <laughs> okay um so this well okay i'm sonia um I am currently at USC. I'm in a master's program for hospitality and tourism. The um, focus is on food and beverage. I'm also a food service manager with the LA Unified School District. Um, this kind of came about because of my final capstone project for the master's program. I knew already what I wanted to do before I even started the program, which was target foster youth who age out for careers in hospitality. Um, because a lot of this stuff that we learn in foster care can be applied to the things that hospitality uh, people do. So that, you know, some of the things that I included with that was like adapting to change very quickly and having to kind of adjust and, and work with a lot of different kinds of people, especially when you're bounced from home to home, which I was. Um, I don't know about Serena, but for me, I was in foster care for about four years before being adopted. And I moved eight times in four years. Mm. Um, so it was, it was a lot. Um, but then, you know, the book came along. She, she wanted me initially to write about my life. <laughs> I don't think it's that interesting. So uh, I went with what I knew and what I actually love. So we got the cookbook. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. You write about who you are and then eventually you can get there to writing mm -hmm. more, right? But you have to start the process when you're doing something like this, right? And how therapeutic is that that it can help other kids, right? But I'm curious, like, what was the process like for you, Serena? Because it had to bring up a lot, like, you know, putting it into your art and you're, you're channeling that in a different way. And you're an LCSW, like, you know, well, actually, what is it in a, what is your I'm license? An, I'm an LPC intern. Thank you. And so, it, I, mean, <laughs> I should know that I taught you, right? But it has yeah. to, it, you know, it had to be something. It had to bring up stuff, you know? Uh, yeah, definitely did. And, and that was, um, I'll say that was the difficult part for me was um, when we initially talked about it and we talked about the importance of sharing our actual stories and the, and the kind of the nitty gritty of it, not sugarcoating, not treating it like, um, you know, give it, give it its due of how impactful it was. Um, I included in the forward, um, my father's death by suicide. And cause that, that's what kind of started my, my journey into, into foster care and, and, and all of the issues that I struggle with now. So that started, uh, he died when I was four and a half. And then I entered the system at 12, um, when my mom just couldn't do it anymore. And, uh, I just, I went to, instead of a lot of homes, I actually was in institutions. I went to, I lived in Orangewood, uh, for a while. I lived in Boys Town, uh, couple different homes, places like that. And uh, as I was writing this, I tried to kind of keep it focused on the food issues specifically, uh, because that's, that's still a struggle for me now. I'm still trying to, still trying to reconcile that. It's kind of my, I, I call it my last goal that I can't seem to master. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, the process, the process was you know, what do I want to say with this? Why am I sharing what I'm sharing? And so I specific, I tried to specifically share what I thought would explain, best explain why this is important. And I know, you know, Sonia and I didn't know each other when we were in the system, obviously, but, but we were in the system around the same time. And uh, it's, it's definitely every kid, every kid deals with it differently. And like I said, I, I wanted to think about why am I sharing what I'm sharing? 
And this, this cookbook is kind of a, an extension of what they started when I aged out in 2000. Uh, with the independent living program. I don't know if you had to do that too, Sonia, probably. Uh, but the independent living program uh, was was also kind of venturing into this place of like, these kids are leaving the system at 18 years old and expected to just know what to do. Where are you going to go? How are you going to take care of yourself? Figure it out later. And 60% of us go homeless at that point. Um, and then we're the next generation that you pass on the street and we're sitting on the sidewalk and we don't know what to do. And uh, I was homeless for a while, and you know, it's it's a uh, it's it's just really important that even if we can just help one aspect of it, just the food part, uh, that's great. Um, as an LPC, like you said, Deborah, like that that's the bigger part that I try and advocate through. Is I I specialize in in foster kids who have complex PTSD and are cutting themselves and and have all of these different ongoing issues because of system and. And so um, it's important that we talk about these things and it's important that we talk about it in a way that is uh, real and, and how it really feels and how it takes, you know, I'm nearly 40 and I'm still struggling with food issues from being a foster kid. And that's just intense. It's intense that it takes that long for us to, to get out of some of these shackles that were put in from this, from this experience. So um, I would say the process was um, healing in some ways, because I had to really focus on, you know, why I do what I do and, and why this is important. And then in other ways, it was challenging because I don't think about those experiences very often in my adult life. Uh, mostly when I think about the system right now, I'm thinking about the children that I serve, um, thinking about my daughter, who I uh, spend a lot of thought on and trying not to pass her any of my trauma and any of my bad habits that might have come from those things. So um, it, it, was, it was empowering, I think mostly. I think mostly it was empowering because I, I got to explore some things I wouldn't have had you not challenged me to specifically think about <laughs> just the, the food stuff. And some of it I hadn't even realized until I thought about the writing. Uh, I, some of those examples that I, the, some of those personal things I put in the forward, um, as I was writing, it came to me and I thought, wow, that's true. That, that probably started then. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for the experience. Definitely. Yeah. And, and for me, you know, it, it's like, she could tell I would like, it, it was a struggle for me. Cause I'm like, just get this done. And my husband, you know, even said, he goes, that's not so easy for her. <laughs> Right. And, and so and she would she would look at me and then when she get frustrated and I'm like, but I need this. Like, what? Why don't know why? You know, you and you even told me she's not there yet. You have you have to realize the process is very different because you don't have the same life pattern. Right. And I said, oh, OK, OK, OK. You know, and so, you know, but it's it's interesting because I love doing this process, though, because I got to know another piece of her. But I loved being the editor. I wasn't the writer this time. I was the guide. Right. Mm -hmm. And that that was a very different role for me. Right. And and I loved it because I got to do it with my my daughter, my baby here. And, you know, and and I loved how I didn't you know, usually I can't articulate what I'm seeing or what I'm feeling or what I want. Right. But you got it. Like, look at these beautiful pictures. And I, you know, I'm going to make the one for the sweets, my my screensaver, because I think all that pink. Look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. Like, I just, you know, you got it. You understood it just from a few things. And so I think that really conveyed it. And then and, and Sonia was able to articulate the recipes that were heartwarming and, 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 and came out of my soul, you know, that, that remind me of her, you know, because we love to cook together. And I, and so it really gave me a whole package of who she was. So I do thank you for that. But how was this for you? Um, she hates when I make her talk like yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was good. I, I don't, I mean, I didn't really. Did you like doing the process? Yeah. I'll help you here. Yeah. No, no. What? It was incredibly frustrating. Oh. Sometimes leave me alone and let me do my thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that I knew. I knew that. We weren't having good moments. No. Um. <laughs> But, but did you like that it came out, that it, it came about, that it's, you know, you have this beautiful thing. Did you ever think you'd have a book? No. 
No. And I think that was part of it is that she couldn't feel it. She couldn't touch it. And then she's like, did it render? Can I touch it? Did it render? And, 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 and then she didn't post it. I'm like, dude, you've been bugging me. Like what? And, it, and I, and my husband's like, because it's here, this is something out of her, her ideas or her, her scope. And now her school, guess what your school's going to do for you? Tell them, tell them, tell them. Um, they're going to be interviewing me um, for my specific program as a highlight to get people to come and join that program. Look at that, my little rock star. Awesome, Sonia. You know, we already have people who bought this. Like it is just so, to me, it's mind blowing from when I met her as a little girl to now to be sitting here and we're at a book signing and now she wants to go to a doctoral program. And you know, you never know what seed you plant. And I'm just so proud of her, <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, it's the, you, you, I think about the girl who gave me dreadlocks on my birthday last year. And, and now, you know, we're doing this. Like, it's like, you know, that's a relationship. You can't, you, you it's very hard to say, you know, when you have a daughter, right? And my mom's sitting right across from me and she's looking at me, she goes, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> she's nodding at me, but it is, it's, it's, it's different. Like I have a different relationship with my son and we wrote our book together, but it is, it is definitely something that was very healing for me because I got to see things about her and it made me understand her in a different way, right? Yeah. Awesome. So one thing I want to do is you can go first there. I want you to sign in. I'm going to send in what we're going to do is exchange books. You can get screenshots, my wonderful tech people, so we can blast them out. So hold it up. We're going to, we're going to um, sign these and then we're going to exchange so that all of us will have a signature of all three of us signing books. Won't that be great? So I'll send you books back. <laughs> and then you'll be getting other copies that are yours in the mail next week. Awesome. So go yeah. ahead, sign it so I can see you do it and then we'll do the same thing. All right. Does it matter where I sign? It's up to you. I usually sign in the harder part. Like, of the yeah, because then it won't get erased. Inside cover? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I can sign it up like that, but I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, show me when you're done then. Okay, hold on. If your husband's there, have him take a picture of you. There you go. That's perfect. And then my husband's going to take pictures of us doing it and then we'll send them for social media. Okay, perfect. And then stage one with your husband wants to sign. Can you put that up again one more time, Serena? I'm sorry. I was trying to take a straight And then go ahead and talk so that your face comes up as the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Perfect. Signature in the book. Right, right. Smile. Got it. Thank you. All right. So we're going to do ours. So I'll, we'll all sign. Now Sonia's gonna sign, so you have to scoot over so they can see you in the camera, honey. Okay, sign so they can see you're doing it, and then we're gonna hold it up. Okay, all right, get in the camera, and we have to talk, right? Can you see it? Yes, I can see it. Yay! Hold it, smile, big smiles. We're talking, we're talking, we're talking. Woo! Yay! Yay! Thank you. <laughs> And then my husband took some, hold on, Lawrence. Coffee. Special oh, coffee. We're going to send it to Serena and we're going to, we're going to sign another one later so that we all three will have one. <laughs> and, and then we'll be around Robin, right? Yeah. So, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool. So um, now I lost my train of thought, but that's okay. <laughs> can I, can I tell you that you nearly gave me a heart attack when you asked me to do a portrait of your daughter for the book? <laughs> Why? Well, because just like we were talking about your relationship with her, that the, the other drawings that, the, you know, however I draw a stalk of corn doesn't matter, but how I represent your baby's face, I read probably seven times. <laughs> I was like, does this look enough? Does this, is this one good? Is this one good? Is this one good? I was so nervous. So I'm, I hope you like that picture of you, Sonia, because I was also worried about the mom thing where maybe that's her favorite picture of you, but you hate it. And then you'll see it and you're like, I hate Serena now. You hate that picture? It's that really bad haircut that I don't know what's going on. That's your little chili bowl haircut. It's so cute. Not okay. Oh, Lawrence is trying to tell us stuff and we're trying to talk. He's saying I, she uh, looks better than that. Yeah, I, I, I like it though. You like, you I do? Yeah. I but, almost betrayed. Huh? 
I said, I almost betrayed you, Deborah. And I was going to, I thought about it for a minute. I was like, I'm going to send her and say, is it okay if I draw this picture? <laughs> I didn't do it though. I didn't you do it. Could have because I was going to leave it as a surprise when it came in the box. And then my yeah. husband told her on accident. So I was like, wasn't okay. me. <laughs> But I like this picture because this is kind of what she looked like when I met her. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, and I thought this is when she was about in foster care, but of course I had that all wrong, but I wasn't around then. So, you know, I could get it, things mixed up. But, <laughs> but I remember, and I told my brother, I said, David, and David wouldn't do this. He's on here somewhere. I said, hey, David, put a turtle on her shirt. She likes turtles. <laughs> and he just completely ignored me, like completely. And then he gave her teeth and sent it back to me. Mm -hmm. he's probably thinking that's more for you than it is for her <laughs> mm -hmm. but we have a few minutes is anyone have questions um that you want to ask like what's the fit best recipe or you know questions about anything that we talked about or anything like that why don't you guys tell us what your favorite recipe is According to Lawrence, it's goulash. Wait, my son's going to tell you. How's that? Come here, Lawrence. He's dying to be on the camera anyways. Okay, put your head right there. The goulash is the best. Oh, okay. We'll have to try that one then. <laughs> Definitely the goulash. Yes, he's been saying world famous goulash and holding up the book today because that is his favorite. We, we all went to Mammoth and tried these recipes every day. We had one, we were there for like, I don't know, two weeks or something. And, and we, we tried a recipe a day and the goulash one. The goulash is, the, is really good. I like the peach pie a lot, um, but you know, they're all very, very good. I Chicken pot pie. Hers is the, in the chicken pot, but chicken pot pie, I forgot that's in the book too. My mom makes the best chicken pot pie. We actually made her come over and make it so Sonia could write it down step by step. Because if you know anyone who's ever cooked in a restaurant, they never make anything the same way twice, right? And so we are like, okay, well, what do you do? What do you do? She's like, just put a little bit more love in it. What, what does that mean? We don't know what that means. <laughs> She's all put the secret ingredient. What is the secret ingredient? Oh, it's a little more sugar. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we we had to do that so that we could get the recipe for it because all these years, that's my favorite dish in the world that she makes and I didn't know how. I'm never going to make it taste like her no matter what, but it is in this book for people to try. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just got the book uh, like day before yesterday, so I haven't made any of the recipes yet. But I'm excited to try the peach pie and the goulash. So I'll let you know. <laughs> They're quite yummy. And if you put the goulash in um, a sourdough bowl, then all the extra sauce, you can like eat it. Like it's so yummy. Yeah, I have to say, even though there's pasta in a bowl, it, it's just yummy. My son's saying yum. <laughs> Maybe for your next one, you can do a vegetarian one because I'm vegetarian. Oh, well, there's a vegetarian recipe in the book. There's but, yeah, but I mean like section. a whole book. Yeah, a whole book. Okay, I didn't know there's- I tried like to get them to do something like that and they weren't listening to me. But see, now you've asked for it, Christina. You yeah. right? But the, what is it? The, the meatless, meatless stuff. stuff. Yeah, there's a section called the meatless Oh, stuff. nice, okay, cool. Yeah. So there is a section, but a whole book. See, I asked for one. Maybe there- well, make sure to continue the the stuff in the vegetarian. <laughs> no, the meatless, the meatless stuff. The he, he's making sure he's, stuff. you know, engineering here. Thank you, Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he asked for a sequel already. I got you. Well, yeah, he did ask for a sequel. Well, thank you guys for coming to the book signing. Mm -hmm.